Today we're going to try and make a pulsing point here and we're going to use uh, two different methods. Start by looking at some of these uh, authentic pulsing points. This is a great uh, article in here, actually a whole booklet on it here. And uh, just fantastic pictures. Really a good uh, reference. One of the things you'll notice about fulsums is that uh, usually when we think of a fulsum we think of a fully fluted point where the flute goes clear to the tip, as you see in a lot of these examples. And these are sometimes referred to as uh, slugs. Basically what happens is a lot of times the, uh, the points will actually start off like this, where they're fluted perhaps halfway or two-thirds of the way, and then as they become dulled or the ends of them break <coughs> from wear and everything, they get resharpened until they get shorter and shorter sort of a little example of that right here. It uh, starts off looking like this, you got your flute here, it gets resharpened, becomes shorter, and then in the final stage it might end up looking sort of like that right there. And a lot of times uh, it's discarded or perhaps found at that point. So uh, we get this impression that fulsums are always fully fluted, and that's not necessarily the case. Perhaps sometimes they were, but I think more often than not, the flutes travel beyond halfway but not necessarily to the tip and uh, we're going to look at some uh, casts of actual fluted points here next this is a broken uh, preform it broke during the fluting process from lithic casting lab it's interesting you can see where it snapped over here and you can see that it doesn't have the fine uh, real fine pressure flaking along the edge here um, obviously that was done after the point was completed or after it was resharpened a number of times. Look at another example here. It's another example. Nice flute on this face. And this face right here, the flute went about halfway. This is from Texas. It's kind of thick. So not all fulsome points are those real thin, really beautiful uh, things that we're used to, to looking at or thinking of. This one's from Oklahoma. It's called the uh, Bob Decker Collection. It's just a killer fulsome. Most fulsums vary between two to four millimeters between the flutes. And one thing that an authentic fulsome will almost always have is it's really, really sharp right in the hafting area right here. So uh, to make a, an authentic replica, this is what you're after is really thin. Uh, the you know distance between the flutes right in here. This is a beauty. This is from the Cooper site. Just a killer. Blackwater draw. This one from Knife River Flint cast. A little bit thick. This is the famous Lindenmeyer Folsom cast. To my knowledge the thinnest Folsom on record ever found. About two millimeters between the flutes. I've made one replica similar to this but I used a jig to do it. So how this guy did this it's I don't know. Can't imagine. It's just an incredible point. This is a Goshen point from Montana. These are believed to be unfluted Folsom points. At least uh, a lot of people believe that. So apparently not all Folsom points were uh, fluted. Okay, we're going to use two different methods. We're going to use a stone anvil to support the tip of the preform in both cases. Uh, one method we're going to use is direct percussion just using a, an antler billet, moose or deer. And uh, here's one I made yesterday, direct percussion. And uh, flute was actually back there. This is the first side fluted. But the reason I'm putting that back on, these are great study pieces. If you keep these flutes, you can look at them and you can see exactly where the point of initiation, where the crack actually started on the flute flick. And uh, that's valuable information because you want this little area right here, right here on either side of that nipple, 
you want to make sure that's not ground. If your nipple is ground in that area, it's just going to take a heck of a lot of force in order to, to get that crack to start right there and there. It's kind of like using a glass cutter to score glass. You want to have that real sharp edge over there so that, that crack can start on those sharp edges and then travel down the length of it here. So uh, it's very useful for that and also for uh, looking at uh, the guide flakes and, and other things like that. Um, I saved the backside one as well. It went full length, but it didn't, uh, you know, it's not quite as wide. The other method we're going to use is this little punch right here. It's got a little groove in it. And we're going to use indirect percussion. Put that on the nipple. The tip will be on the anvil. And we'll take a flute off like that. I've only done uh, just a couple of each of these, so I don't have it down pat or anything like that. It's kind of a learning experience, but uh, you'll see what works. Oh, one final comment. All of these are being done with uh, Aboriginal tools. Antler for pressure flaking, antler and hammer stones for the percussion flaking, and I'm not using any copper for anything. I'm trying to keep it all authentic. This is Arizona Dacite. Kind of brittle material. Tends to break pretty easily. Softer than the uh, Oregon Dacite. Uh, we're going to try and remove a flute off this face right here. And then if we're successful, we'll do this face right here. So, here we go. Give me a close up of that. Okay. For my leather. Okay, I've got my leather on there. I'm going to use this billet right here. I'm going to jam it into my leg nice and tight. Try and uh, really steady up that point so that the flake can travel full length. A few practice swings, just like in golf. three practice swings to get it. Didn't go quite full length, but uh, it's acceptable. Could make a Folsom. Now we'll do the back side, see how that comes out. Here's side two. I reflake this a little bit with a sharp antler tine. Get the convexity a little bit better. reasonably straight. I don't think it's going to go full length, but I'm hoping it'll go at least up into there. I'm trying to keep this thing focused. Okay. acceptable. We'll finish it up and do another one. Well this is kind of rare but uh, I actually managed to break this thing with the edge retouch. The stone is just really brittle. It's fairly thin between the flutes here and this stuff has crystal prockets in it and really really brittle stone. So. Uh, this is what we ended up with here. I was just using this little antler here. Puts a lot of force on it. I probably didn't support it correctly either. But uh, uh, we'll try again. <laughs>